Good afternoon, everybody. It's Stephen Paul back at you for Winextra's Daily Brief. I'll spit that out yet. For March the 3rd, 2011. The second time round. <laughs> we, we <laughs> You're having up. problems with your intros today. Yeah, I know. I'm just so excited about all the freaking great news we've got to share today. Yawn. Oh, yeah. Can you say that like you actually give a crap? I do if we actually had any really fantastic... Well, we got one really interesting... We have story. some interesting stories today, stop. Yes. Um, but before we do get into today's show, I actually want to put a call out to our to our listeners and our, our viewers, no matter what platform they may be on. I've decided, and for the last... Well, I started yesterday, really, to switch over to sort of fully Microsoft for a couple of weeks. So, you know, using IE9, RC is my main browser. Um, I have Office 2010, so instead of living in my Google webmail to use that for my Gmail, or use that to pull in my email from all my accounts and whatnot. But I'm running into a problem with syncing my calendars. And the problem I have is that I have 64-bit version of Office 2010. And as far as I can tell, how you sync your calendars is by using Google's calendar sync program which they released a long time ago but they updated it about seven months ago to work with Outlook 2010 but they never updated it to work with the 64-bit version now my personal calendar I can sort of live without having in Outlook but I have a lot of calendars that are shared with other people for you know planning business and all that sort of stuff so I can't ask that all of them to change their calendars as well. So I, I need a Why not? sync <laughs> to inconvenience other people. But I need a sync solution then. I did some, you know, some quick Bing and Google searches yesterday and didn't really come up with anything of use. Um, so, you know, reaching out to our obviously Microsoft software using listenership and viewership and hoping that you guys can provide me a solution and uh, so folks voicemail would be uh, awesome on this one voicemail at 251-287-8730 or drop us an email to podcast at winextra.com send us a text message or leave us a message in the comments anywhere that you're watching the show it would be very much appreciated folks um, we have another PSA for today as well. Uh, it appears that Microsoft has resumed the Windows Phone 7 updates for the Samsungs. Yeah, they've started pushing these out again. Now, remember, folks, all you get on your phone is the update notification. You still have to hook your phone up uh, to the Zoom software on your laptop in order, or laptop, desktop, whatever, in order to actually get the update but apparently they've got the bugs fixed so they're pushing the updates again this is of course the update to the updater to ensure that you can have the update when the update is ready to go by the carriers but you know recently we've seen I, I don't know if you picked up on this was it a day or two ago Google had to dump a whole load of um, apps from the Android app store yeah. because malware you know, it was malware. But the funny thing is that they didn't affect any phones that were running Android 2.2 up. So, you know, this kind of thing is the reason why companies like Google, companies like Microsoft, um, and have to kick the asses of the carriers. And the carriers have to basically cop the feck on because yep. they're putting users at risk because they refuse and, it, that, and that is what's happening with the Windows Phone 7 updates they don't want to put the updates nope. out because they want to charge for every possible update and feature so you know I'm starting to wonder whether or not there's the possibility of some sort of an antitrust thing against um, against the carriers in this respect when it comes to updates to to phones that people own you know, if these are security updates and that sort of stuff and feature updates that are being pushed out by companies like Microsoft, like Google, and the carriers won't let them on just because they want to they want to um, they want to charge for future releases, but then we're seeing that, you know, they're deliberately putting users in harm's yeah. way yeah. if an update is available for a phone and they don't allow it. 
Yeah. That's an interesting idea. I'm not sure if it would fly, but it's an interesting idea. Um, there's a couple legal stories regarding Microsoft uh, up today. Uh, the first one is Microsoft apparently is considering legal action over Facebook's grabbing their global or their, their head of uh, sales, ad sales. Carol Berlin. Emerson, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting one. Basically, it's the, it's the same sort of deal as that uh, Mizuski guy um, who went to Salesforce.com. Uh, basically, Microsoft don't want them doing the same job at the other company. So yeah. basically, they don't want them to have to be able to use the strategic information. They don't want them to be able Wait, to yes. um, yeah. contact the same clients that they previously had. Here's the thing, though. Like, Microsoft and Facebook have a fairly comfortable relationship. They, they work well together. What would possess Facebook turning around and snapping up or, or trying to Do you get want my honest answer? Arrogance. Facebook doesn't give a flying fuck about you, about Microsoft, about anybody. It's really that simple. All Facebook cares about is progressing its goal forward. And they don't care who they trample on in order to do that, whether you're a developer, whether you're an end user privacy, or whether you're a partnering company. They don't care. They never have. Like, this is the kind of move that Microsoft would have pulled in its heyday. I could see them doing it back, what, in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, but Microsoft has grown up. Yeah. But Facebook still has a, tw has a pimply 25-year-old arrogant son of a whatever at running top of the company who really only cares about his agenda and we're seeing more and more of that with you know facebook is now pushing the whole um thing again that they they stopped in january uh, but you know they're they're pushing this thing again where they're going to allow third party apps and advertisers access to your home telephone number yeah. and access to your to your your home address on top of all your other data and this is a company that rose to prominence and rose to popularity built on the idea that once you put your information in there, it was private. Yeah, yeah. And then they turned around and kicked everybody in the balls in that respect. And if I sound bitter about this, I am. You yeah, know? The, the, the problem is that you know people like you and I are, are in a hard rock place here because the, it's a force that, as a as a content producer, we can't afford to ignore or we can't use. afford to ignore it because it drives traffic yes. to our to our platforms and to our sites. So we cannot not have a presence there. And now I know people are going to turn around and say, "Look, well, if you don't want your information on Facebook, don't put it on Facebook." And I'll tell them people, those people, that they're as dumb as two sharp planks, because people like me, when we signed up for Facebook, it was using. A, you know, under the auspices of an agreement that stated that your information is private, your information is your yeah. is yours, and you can remove it, and are, you know that it's your information, and that they will, would not do anything with it. But as the years have go on, go, gone on, they've reneged on that agreement that made them popular. I I, I just and it's don't impossible think for me to. It's been proven that it's impossible for me to even delete my information from Facebook. Yeah. It, it, because I, as much as they say your Facebook your account is gone or deleted or deactivated, it's not. And actually, no. that causes me problems with Microsoft too. I don't like Microsoft partnering with them when it comes to Facebook's use of data and uh, data portability. Yeah, uh, it's it's going to be interesting. I I don't know whether Microsoft can really afford to take them to court over to how or how it will affect their their partnership, but. I'm sorry, that was just the wrong thing to do, Facebook. Really, really was. That well, was you know what? Hopefully Microsoft face. will have the same sort of victory they had in court when it, with um, Matt Mazuski, who they yeah. got put off for a year, you know? So. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, second lawsuit news is, uh, is it's talking about strange bed partners, but Google and Microsoft are combining to uh, sue a company called Geotag, which is a Texas-based patent troll, basically. Uh, company that is looking to go IPO, um, but yeah, I guess it, it, the the patent is entitled 
Internet organizer for accessing geographically and topically based information. Yeah, now, this is another one of those ridiculously la uh, wide ranging patents that really doesn't say anything specific, no. but was granted by the U.S. Uh, was granted by the U.S. Patent Office. Seriously, those guys need to wake the crap up. But that's yeah. another story. Um, and basically, Microsoft and Google have just teamed up and they said, "Look, you guys have already sued too many people." So yeah. what they're doing now is preemptively going after these guys so that they can first off show that the patent that, that these guys have doesn't infringe. Yeah. And secondly, so that they can tr attempt to invalidate it. And it'll be, you know, because they're, ba they're basically saying, that, you know what, there's prior art yeah. in existence that wasn't taken into account, so on and so forth. And I'm just wondering what kind of recourse that would have for companies who have already been sued. I don't know how that stands legally. But if Microsoft could turn around and prove that that patent was invalid, how would that affect companies? Because there has been like over 100, what is it? Um, I think they've sued. Um, I don't know how many they were successful with, but the claim has been used in lawsuits in, against more than 300 companies. Yeah. So and the thing is, Geotag uh, apparently paid like 119 million dollars for this one patent. But you see, the idea of patents was that they were supposed to, you know, protect somebody that came up with um, something new, some something innovative, for a limited amount of time. So that you know they could profit off it, yeah. To make it worthwhile and drive innovation, and then you know it would be released and everybody could go on with it. Yeah. But that has sort of fallen by the wayside completely. It's not a and this is a patent troll company. Yeah. They have no product. No. They just have a patent that yeah. they bought, and this patent has changed hands five times already. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, speaking of products. Uh Bing had an interesting announcement this morning. Uh, apparently, they're 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 partnering with a company called the Deal Map, and they're going to be offering uh, Bing deals, like much like Groupon or Social Living or uh, uh, some of these other coupon companies. Well, actually, they're involved in it. Basically, what Bing deals, from what I'm reading, does. I haven't actually tried it out yet, but it. Um, it, it aggregates those deals from Groupon, Living Social, Restaurant.com, making those deals easier for you to discover, easier for you to share, etc., etc., while you're doing your searches on Bing. Yeah, it's not available in Canada. It's only available in the U.S. right now. But well, hang I, on. I think, Let me go to my Bing. I think it's uh, that is a it's a really interesting yeah. move on Bing, and again, it it reinforces their argument that they are a decision engine. You know, rather than a yeah, but isn't that just another fancy word too? Oh know? yeah, okay, fine. But I'm talking about it's it's in line with their marketing platform for Bing. It's allowing you to make more uh, more informed and better decisions based on the social graph or or whatever, and what your friends are doing, what's you know what deals are there. I think it's. How am I supposed to get to this? Um, I just went to Bing and I did a search for my locality and I didn't get. I got I deals and stuff. On, on the, see, this is it's primarily a, a mobile app, but there is a desktop one. Um, simply, a oh, search for the name of a business on Bing. If there's a deal, there you'll you'll see a, a green deal icon. If there's any deals for it. Okay, so I'm searching now for. Let's start with mobile. AL where I am pizza right I don't get anything well I, I get lots of things but I don't get anything that is specifically a deal um, pizza hut pizza is usually a <laughs> usual I get well, you know the thing is this is just I guess gone live this morning I'm not sure if any everybody would have it or whatever yeah I'm getting stuff from city search and Yahoo local and yeah it's but not anyway, appearing in mine yet. It's 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 a work in progress. What can we say? Um, the last bit of news today again is is Bing related, but apparently uh, Bing tried a little bit of an experiment where they they had a promotion on Farmville. 
uh, in Facebook. Um, they sent out an update. Any Farmville fans out there, try using Bing to get the most out of your crops and animals. It's, it links to a Bing search result for Farmville animals. The update drew 585 comments in four hours and 20,000 click-throughs. 20,000 click-throughs, yeah. And their fan base jumped doubled. from 100,000 to over half a million. So they yeah. actually added 425,000 plus fans in one Wow. Day, which is a lot of eyeballs to be pushing information out to. Yeah. Regularly now that they have them on the fan base. Yeah. It's not a bad, that's not a bad thing. That's something I might want to consider trying for some of my sites. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying something <laughs> like that too, get the word out about, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> All well, right, last, uh, last one for the day. But, um, a very quick sort of one for Xbox Live gamers. It can be very frustrating when you go on and you want to pick a gamer tag and you can't get the one you want. Because some stupid git registered it like three years ago and then, you know, never used it and it's just been sort of sitting there unused by everybody or to change their gamer tag or whatnot. But apparently now Microsoft is releasing a whole bunch of locked gamer tags, ones that have fallen into disuse that nobody's using anymore, etc., etc., etc. So they're available. So if you are going to change your gamer tag, or if you're starting a brand new gamer tag, you might have a bit more choice available. So you might be able to get something better than, you know, Stephen Hodson, the cranky Canadian, it triple X one forty seven five ninety two. And on that note, folks, go grab yourself a new gamer tag and uh, think of Paul and myself when you when you do that. That just uh, sounds perverted. No, don't think of us when you do that. <laughs> what you can do, folks, though, is, you know, let us know what you think about any of the news that we've mentioned today by uh, dropping us a line to 251-281-8730. Lines are open 24 hours a day to take a, a voice message or a text message from you. And as always, no matter where you're watching us, whether it's on dailybrief.flip.tv, winextra.com, youtube.com slash winextra, or, or on iTunes, search for winextra, um... Rate us, thumb us up, give us four or five stars, tell us how good we aren't. and Because, uh, you know, we love it when you do that. Yes. And on that note, uh, that's Paul. I'm Steve. This has been Win Extra's Daily Brief for March the 3rd, 2011. Take care, everybody. Take it easy, folks.